And one general thing, which I think is important, a general lesson that can be applied across those situations. And even if we don't have the, uh, uh, the data, the figures, or not yet, is to select a proper counterfactual. In economics, nothing is worth anything on its own. It is always and only worth something in comparison with an alternative. So what is the alternative to diversity? If the alternative to diversity is demonstrably something like uniformity, uh, I think it becomes quite clear to most people that diversity is better. This notion of selecting the proper counterfactual is strategically important in very specific situations. For example, uh, it's an example that I've given in, in many, on many occasions, but at least there we have some estimates. When, after the end of fascism in Spain, the Basque country decided to move from a unilingual to a bilingual education system, instead of having education only in Spanish, offering education in Spanish or Basque, or a combination of both. Mother tongue medium education for the Basque kids, but second language medium education for the Spanish language uh, uh, kids coming from Spanish speaking families, but who wanted to learn Basque. In, that means, okay, doubling the number of languages of instruction. But since kids have to be schooled anyway, and you know, the teacher student ratio by and large remains the same, and the number of classrooms and buildings you need by and large remains the same. The extra cost is in the region of 3%. So you bilingualize an education system for about a 3% extra cost. Uh, this is the proper counterfactual of uh, 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 bilingual education in that case. So there you can see how inexpensive it can be. Last uh, uh, slide is about the distributive dimension. I said I didn't, wouldn't talk about it. Uh, but I still want to say a few words uh, uh, because it has implications for mother tongue medium education. As we've said, the relevance of mother tongue medium education can be established on various grounds, cognitive development, linguistic human rights, etc. And what I've just said with the economic perspective can help complement the argument in two ways. First, we can try to justify diversity as a public good and hence justify a mother tongue medium education. And uh, we can also, and this brings us to the issue of uh, the more contingent aspect of the issue, uh, show how it can increase the overall efficiency of education systems. Uh, mother tongue education, as we know from uh, uh, African experience, for example, uh, but not just African, also European, it has not been, I think there is still room to systematize and synthesize all this, but essentially lower dropout rates which means that there is more kids in the system, so it increases cost, but also lower repetition rates, and it decreases cost. So we can you know, develop this line of argument. Uh, this, there is empirical confirmation by this in a recent, recent set of, stud uh, of studies on Africa, and I'm here mentioning the name of a scholar, the son of a snow, Catherine Juch, who's been working on this. There is also a massive potential in CLIL, content and language inter integrated learning, also called uh, uh, partial immersion. Um, and uh, there is also, by and large, better learning in a language that the students understand, quite simply. You know, there's, we can, there's interesting anecdotes about you know, kids being taught things through a language that they don't understand, and they get a degree at the end, but they've learned nothing, because, well, not much, please, because it was taught in a language they don't speak. Um, and finally, this word of fairness. When we talk about fairness, we don't mean ethical considerations. This is for philosophers or a political scientist to do. What we mean by fairness is identifying who gains and who loses and how much. Now, if we deny the right to mother tongue education to some people who are also taxpayers, who are marginalizing their language, so we are redistributing resources from all taxpayers towards the taxpayers who speak a majority language. So therefore, in relative terms, you're taking away from the minority to give to the majority. And this is blatantly contrary to the basic principle of fairness, which are enshrined in, in basic policy uh, evaluation. So I think that fairness is also a valid and powerful argument from an economic perspective 
independently of its value in the perspective of uh, 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 linguistic human rights, LHR, not IHLR, I'm sorry for the misprint here. Well, uh, I think I've spoken long enough, so I'd like to say uh, uh, thank you. Uh, I can say this in the four official languages of my country, in German, French, Italian, Romance, which you probably haven't heard often, so that's Grazie. And thank you, but also since I remember this from this long-time visit in uh, Zanskar, Tukjishe. Thank you.